Family Theater presents Bing Crosby. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Foreign Exchange. And here is your host, Bing Crosby. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Foreign Exchange, with Lamont Johnson as Bill Thayer and Jean Bates as Sonia. Mr. Thayer? Yes? The assistant minister will see you now. Oh. This way, please. Thanks. The correspondent, Mr. Thayer, to see you, sir. Thank you, Garoshi. That will be all. Come in, Mr. Thayer. Sit down. Thanks. Uh, by the way, aren't, aren't we acquainted, uh, Mr... Pitloff, I don't believe so. Weren't you this country's press chief at the Bulgarian trials two years ago? You have a good memory for faces, Mr. Thayer. So I've been told. Also, you like to ask questions. Well, it's my job to be curious. Yeah. Then you are probably curious as to why I have sent for you. Hmm? I'll admit it. I have here your application for a visa to leave the country. That's right. I'm uh, being transferred to the paper's London office. You can check on that pretty easily if you want to. I already have. London confirmed it. Well? I notice you have included your wife on this application. Is there anything irregular about that? You realize, of course, that as a national of this country, your wife is subject to the same travel restrictions as her fellow citizens. Look, uh, Mr. Petloff, we've tried to cooperate with your department. Sonia and I waited almost a year just for official permission to get married. And during that year, you were reminded repeatedly that the state frowns on such marriages, were you not? Yes, but you, you did finally authorize it. Against our better judgment. And now, instead of letting well enough alone, you are again asking for special treatment. What is so special about it? I'm a newspaper man. Common sense would tell you I'd have to move around on the job. Common sense should have made you consider that before you got married. Look, Sonia is, is not going to be any loss to you. She's not a member of the party. Are you submitting that as an argument in her favor? I am just submitting the facts. She has never been a member of the People's Party. We know all about your wife, Mr. Taylor. Well, then you know she doesn't hold a state job, so you, you won't be losing a worker. Someone will have to replace her as an interpreter for your paper? Oh, what of it? You, you don't have to pick up the check. We will have to furnish the person. It will cost the state a pair of hands. All right. <laughs> what's, what's the real reason? The real reason? Yes, why, why won't you let Sonia leave the country? Your wife's maiden name is Lazarek, is it not? Mm -hmm, that's right. How well do you know her family? Outside of one cousin, she hasn't got a family. Her parents died during the Nazi occupation. It is our understanding that she was raised by an uncle, one Alex Lazarek. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. He died about three years ago, just before I met her. Alex Lazarek is very much alive. We know that for certain. All right. He's alive. What about it? The state would be favorably disposed to grant almost any reasonable request of a person who could help us to discover the whereabouts of Alex Lazarek. I see. Mr. Petlov, even if her uncle were alive and my wife knew where to locate him, you don't honestly think she'd make a deal of this kind, do you? Of course not. But I wasn't thinking of your wife, Mr. Thayer. I was thinking of you. What do you take me for? I take you for a man who can face facts, Mr. Taylor. And the facts are that your wife will never be able to leave this country without official permission. I intend to get that permission. You will fail. Here is another fact for you to think about. Alex Lazarek is an ex-Nazi. I don't believe you. How else do you think he lived through the occupation? Why was he spared when your wife's parents were not? How should I know? Exactly. How? Ask your wife a few questions, Mr. Thayer. See if I am lying. And then ask yourself, 
Is it worth being permanently separated from the woman you love to shield a former member of the Gestapo? It's a wonderful evening, Bill, but I'm dead. Have fun, honey? Don't we always? Of course I had fun. And I can't wait for you to take me to the ballet in London. That is real dancing. Even you will like it. <laughs> what do you mean, even me? I'm a very cultured guy. Didn't I, <laughs> didn't I applaud at all the right times tonight? <laughs> you applauded loudest when it was all over. Well, so did everybody. <laughs> but for different reasons. You know, darling, when I was a little girl during the occupation, I would go to the ballet. And at the end, the German soldiers would clap the same way, very loudly, at the end. Mm. I think they found the ballet not Wagnerian enough for them. Mm. Maybe not. Uh, who'd you used to go with? Oh, alone sometimes, sometimes with my schoolmates. Your uncle ever take you? Uncle Alex? Oh, no, he hates dancing. You mean he hated it? Yes. That's what I mean. Would you like some coffee and cheese, dear? Yeah, yeah, great. Hmm. Have you heard anything about our visa application yet? It's in the works. I thought perhaps that's what you were sent for today by the ministry. You thought that's why I was sent for today by the ministry? <laughs> well, anyway, I thought it. I'm surprised we haven't been called in. Oh, well, what makes you think we should be? They always do questions. Where are we going? Why? Mm -hmm. That looks good. Uh. Sonia? Mm -hmm. mm. Here. Draw one of these round ones next. Mm. Thanks. <clears throat> Before you came to work for the paper, weren't you... weren't you ever approached to join the party? Mm. Once or twice. Why? Do you have any trouble saying no? Not much. They looked into my record and found that under the Nazis, my parents had been classified pro-American. That was enough to make me look decadent. How about Uncle Alex? He ever join up? Oh, no. Uncle Alex never joined anything in his life. What did, what did he do for a living? He was a policeman. There's a run on left. You want it? No, you eat it. You mean uh, he, he wore a uniform? Oh, the coffee. Uh, you, you mean Uncle Alex was just a local uniform cop? Cop? Policeman. Oh, <laughs> yes, I think so. But he didn't wear a uniform, just a suit. Watch out, it's hot. Was, uh, was he a policeman while the Nazis were here? Uncle Alex? Yes, what of it? I'm just asking. A great many municipal workers stayed in their jobs then. They were forced to. What are, you, what are you getting so worked up about? I just ask a simple question. Everybody thinks if you stayed in your job under the Nazis, you were a collaborator. Well, a lot of them were, weren't they? Yes, and a lot of them were not. A lot of them stayed on to commit sabotage under the noses of those goose steppers. Would you guess that's why your Uncle Alex stayed on? Yes. You ever say so? He was not a braggart. Bill, what's the matter with you? Why are you so full of questions? I'm not full of questions. Good grief. I've told you every single bit of my life, my friends, where I went to school, what I thought about. I ask a few things about your uncle, you get hysterical. I'm not hysterical. I just want to forget that part of my life. It was horrible. My parents hounded into their graves. Uncle Alex having to run away like a common criminal. I thought you said he died here. He yes, he did. I... Oh, Bill, I... I promised not to tell. Take it easy. Take it easy, darling. Please. He, he had to run away. They would have killed him. Who's they? The party right after the coup. They, they came looking for him. I promised never to tell a soul, but that was before I met you. A friend of his, a doctor, forged a death certificate. We even held a funeral. Oh, I've wanted to tell you so many times. Oh, don't worry, honey. No, don't worry now. Everything's going to be all right. I'm still alive somewhere. Did you ever hear from him? No, and then... He has a new name and new papers. He's safe. Bill, I, I didn't want any secrets between us, but I promise... Sure, I know. I understand. I don't want to think about any of that ever again. 
I'm your wife now, and we have our own lives. In a few weeks, we'll be leaving here together, and I never want to come back. We won't. I promise you. Hey, boss. Got a minute? Uh, sure, Will. Where you been all morning? Down the files. Someone looking for me? No, no. I, I wondered how you made out at the ministry yesterday. That's what I wanted to see you about. Not good. Sit down. What happened? Do you mind if I shut the door? No, go ahead. I, um... Uh, I got some pretty cold treatment over there. But I want to give Sonia a visa. I was afraid of that. Harry, do I have to take that London job? They want you pretty bad. But couldn't you explain that I... Look, kid. I'll let you in on something confidential. This bureau's folding up its tent... You're just the first to go. By the end of the year, we'll all be out of there. We're shutting down for good? That's a word. Well, it makes sense. We aren't running a newspaper anymore. All we can file are official handouts. This place has turned into a publicity office for the People's Party. And what am I going to do? I, I, I can't leave Sonia here. And you might try to sneak her out. It's awful risky stuff. Well, that takes connections. Good connections. I can't even help you there. Back in 46, 47, they used to go for a trade once in a while, but... I can't think of anything you could offer him now. What kind of a trade? DPs, mostly. You'd have one of our people, we'd have one of their people, so there'd be a deal. Would they live up to their bargain? Sure. When they want somebody, they want them bad. I, I wish I could come up with a suggestion, Bill, but... No, it's all right, Harry. I... I think I'll be able to work something out. Oh, let's go over this once more, Mr. Thayer, so there'll be no mistakes. Your wife has learned exactly where Lazarek is staying. Yes. But you do not have the address yourself. She doesn't know the address. She knows the house. That's why she has to take me there. And you are absolutely certain that your wife has no knowledge of our agreement? I have already told you, Pedlar. She thinks her uncle may have some connection with the underground, and I convinced her he is her only chance to get out of the country. Very good. Very good indeed. And you know for a fact that she has made contact with I, him. I have her word for it. The appointment is for 10.30 tonight. Mm. And it seems to cover things. Do you have any questions, Garoshi? Just a suggestion, sir. Might it not be wise for one of our men to accompany Mr. Thayer and his wife tonight? Emily as a precaution. Oh, that's out. I will say what is in or out, Mr. Thayer. It won't work. Who would I tell my wife he was? He has a point, Garoshi. Why not make him a friend of Lazarek, a fellow member of the underground? Well, what's Lazarek going to think when he sees this man? Lazarek will not see him until you and your wife have left. After which, what that you stop of big things about anything should be of small concern to you. I s still think that's a bad idea. I'm beginning to like it, Mr. Taylor. Now, who would you suggest for the job, Garoshi? Why not myself, sir? I have been on this case since the first. And now you want to finish it. Very well. I will expect to hear from you as soon as Lazarek is in custody. One more thing. What about that visa? Oh, but of course. It is here, my desk. Would you like to examine it? I would. And here. Perfectly in order. You will note the stamp across the face of it with my signature. Mm, yeah. It renders the bearer diplomatically immune. Now, that visa will take you and your wife out of the country however you chose to travel. It looks all right. Never feared. It is. And now you will be kind enough to hand it to Mr. Garoshi. But you... He will give it back to you. Tonight, at about 10.35... Of what? Nothing to worry about. Where are we supposed to meet this... this friend of Uncle Alex? We're almost there now. Across the street from the public records building. I wish Uncle had mentioned him to me. 
Well, he probably had his own reasons for not wanting to. I guess so. Sonia? Hmm? Were, were you and your uncle pretty close? No, not really. Not like my parents were. He... Uncle Alex was a stern man. He was not afraid of anything. What do you ask? I just wondered if you'd miss him. I miss him now. I meant uh, after we're out of the country. I suppose I shall. Ah, look, there he is on the corner. Garoshi. What did you say the man's name was? Uh, Garoshi? I don't imagine that's his real name, though. Mr. Thayer? Get in the back seat. We'll talk after I pull away. This is my wife, Mr. Garashi. A pleasure, Mrs. Thayer. How do you do? Have you seen my uncle recently? Quite recently. Is he well? As well as can be expected. I know you'd better start giving me directions. Oh, yes. You turn left two blocks after this and then stay on that street until we cross the river. Good enough. Mrs. Thayer, hmm? you will not take it amiss, I hope, if I ask you to confirm the address of your uncle's house, just as a normal precaution. Well, I... I don't really know the address, but I can show you how to get there. Uh, I am glad you did not try to bluff me, Mrs. Thayer. D- did Uncle Alex tell you I didn't know the number? Naturally. A man in his position cannot be too careful. <laughs> Listen to him, darling. Uncle Alex doesn't even trust us. Well, that's not surprising. A man who worked for the Gestapo hasn't got much reason to trust anybody. The Gestapo? What are you talking about? Who worked for the Gestapo? Your uncle. Bill, that's a lie. Yeah? Why do you think he went underground? Why do you think there's a price on his head? Because he fought them. Oh, Bill, because he fought the People's Party as hard as he fought the Nazis. Uh, he's your uncle. You love him. Think, think what you want. It's not what I think. He was a resistance leader. Do you believe patriotic people would have risked their lives to help him escape three years ago if he'd been a Nazi? What patriotic people? The doctor who forged his death certificate, the priest who held the funeral. Do you know where they spent the war in Dachau, in a Nazi death camp? Why didn't you ever tell me this before? There was no reason before. But if I'd thought you suspected this of my uncle, I... Mr. Garoshi, you know him. Tell my husband. Tell him the kind of man Alex Lazarek really is. He is one of the last great enemies of the state at large today. And that's why the state wants him, not because he was a Nazi? Some of our current regime's most trusted secret police are ex-Nazis. They find the atmosphere highly congenial. I see. Sonia, I, I've made a, a pretty terrible mistake. No. No, it's not that terrible, darling. No. Now that you understand. No, I I understand. I understand a lot of things. Then you understand, Mr. Thayer, that the state is still vitally interested in Lazarek's whereabouts, if not precisely for the reasons you thought. Yeah, I understand that, too. Bill, we're almost there. I said apartment house on the corner. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess we uh, pull around and back, I guess. If you wish. Yeah, sure. I'll just swing up this alley and... Hey. Sounds like we got engine trouble. I filled it with petrol just this afternoon. Yeah, the gauge shows almost full, but the... There she goes. Uh, Garoshi, you you consider yourself a mechanic? Well, I would hardly say that, Mr. Thayer, but if you wish, I will have a look at the motor. (laughs) I don't even know how to get the vents open. Uh, That handle just to the left of the steering wheel. Yeah? Uh, Release it toward you. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a torch, Mr. Garoshi? In my pocket, thank you. If you want anything, just yell. Uh, better turn off the switch. That's all. Good. Do you think it's anything serious, dear? It's plenty serious. What are you looking for under the seat? A toolkit. But if Mr. Garoshi needed tools... He doesn't. He... I can explain it all now, but we've got to stop Garoshi from getting to your uncle. Stop him? I know what I'm talking about. Just trust me. Vera... What are you going to do with that wrench? The best I can. Bill! Stay put, Sonia. Just keep quiet and stay put. I know what I'm doing. Garoshi? Yes? How's it look? It looks as if you have changed your mind, Mr. Thayer. Put down that wrench. Uh, what do you... Put it down! That is better. Now, will you be kind enough to have your wife lead us the rest of the way to Alex Lazarek? Give 
Keep going. It is on the second floor. Sonia, is that you? Uncle Alex, don't come down. Yeah, that's all right. It's a trap. It seems you were mistaken about Mr. Ter Garoshi. In a way, Alex, and then in a way not. Uncle Alex, do you know who this man is? Say what goes on here. Yes, I know him, Sonia. As for what goes on, Mr. Ter, if you will step into my flat, Mr. Garoshi and I will be glad to explain. Do you know this man's a member of the secret police? Yes. And I also know that he is the sole hope you and Sonia have for getting out of this situation with your lives. Less than half a mile. You understand exactly what you are to do, Mr. Taylor? I show the visa to the guards along with my press credentials. And then you let Garoshi do the talking, no matter what they ask you. Yeah, gotcha. Just uh, one thing, Garoshi. How are you going to square this with Petlov? I have a plan. So down there. There's the border station up ahead. I don't see anything. The red and green lights. Ready, Garoshi? Ready. Drive up to the gate and stop. Keep the motor running. Here comes the guard. Identification, please. Yes. Here's our visa. Mr. William Thomas Taylor. Mrs. Sonia Lazarek Taylor. That's right. This is my press card and accreditation papers. Mm -hmm. These seem to be in order. May I see your paper, sir? Certainly. My police card. Oh, yes, sir. And the other gentleman? He's in my custody. His papers have been confiscated. Sir, I have strict orders that without proper identification, no one can pass. And I have strict orders from the highest authority that this man is to be across the border by midnight. Now lift the gate. I'm sorry, sir. It is impossible. Your zeal is to be admired, my man. And for that reason, I will give you one more chance to avoid being arrested on the charge of obstructing the state. Would you be kind enough to note the signature on Mr. Taylor's visa? Very well, sir, but... Nikolai Petlov. The same. We are traveling under his personal orders. I... I did not understand. Very well, but now that you do, raise the gate. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. All right, there. Go ahead. Oh, brother. Oh, that was a little too close for me. I thought that guard would never let us go. Turn off the next side road. What's the idea? Here we separate. You are safe now. You will have no further need for us. But, Uncle Alex, aren't you coming too? No, my child. I must go back. Your life won't be worth a plug nickel. It has not been worth even that for some time. Please, Uncle Alex. There is still much work to be done, my child. And it can only be done within our country. Here we are. I, um, guess your opinion of me is better left unsaid, huh, Mr. Lazarus? No. No, I understand you were thinking of Sonia. Besides, you tried to save me once you understood the truth. I'm surprised you played along with me. We had our reasons. You are a newspaper man. You can tell the world what is happening here. I will. Don't worry. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, uncle. Goodbye, Garoshi. Oh, uh, I almost forgot, Mr. Taylor. What's that? The visa. May I trouble you for it, please? Huh? Won't we be needing it anymore? No, but I will to keep Petlov from purging me. I don't think I get you. This, your visa, is the big blunder Mr. Petloff made. He signed it. You mean you're going to use that on him? Only if he threatens to expose my blunder in letting you escape. <laughs> Pretty good. But will Petloff allow himself to be intimidated like that? He has no choice. We will come to some arrangement. Uh, how is it that countryman of yours once said it, Mr. Thayer? I can afford to walk softly... I carry a big stick. It is getting late, Garoshi. We must leave. Goodbye, son. Bill. Bye. Goodbye, son. Bye. Mr. Come Garoshi. Come well, I guess we better get along. Yes. Dad. 
darling. Hmm? Who was it who said to walk softly? You carry a big stick? Yes. Yeah. Man who used to be president of the United States a long time ago. Even before the Nazis and the People's Party? Even before that. <laughs> That's strange. How so? You'd almost think he was telling the world how to deal with them. This is Bing Crosby again. You know, I read something the other day that struck me so forcefully that I'd like to pass it on to you. I'm not sure where I read it, and in fact, I'm not even sure I have the exact wording, but this was the main thought. That God, at death, will not judge us by how large an obituary we get in the New York Times or the Daily Variety, but rather in one instant he will look down into the eyes and the hearts of our family, our employees, our friends, our neighbors, our acquaintances, Literally everyone with whom we have ever come in contact during our lifetime. And he will know. That's a frightening thought, isn't it? That so many thousands of people will have a say in our final judgment. The shoe shine boy that shined our shoes 15 years ago. The counter girl that serves us our lunch every day. A school chum whom we haven't seen for 30 years. How would we rate in the eyes of these people? Most of all, how would we rate in the eyes of the people who know us best? our own family. They're the ones closest to us, the ones with whom we live and work and play, and if we're smart, the ones with whom we pray, too. For if in our big moment of judgment God can look into the hearts of our family and find that they were daily joined together and lifted to him in prayer, he will share his glory with us and our family forever. It's true on earth as it is for all eternity in heaven. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Foreign Exchange. Bing Crosby was your host. Featured were Lamont Johnson as Bill and Gene Bates as Sonia. Others in our cast were Edgar Berrier, Ted DeCorsia, Jack Crucian, and Barney Phillips. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The Legend of High Chin Bob, starring Walter Brennan and Deborah Paget. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.